Morning everyone, 7 o'clock here on your Thursday. Welcome to Up With Krem. I'm Tim Pham. And I'm Channing Curtis. As we're getting you prepared for the day ahead, let's take a look at the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick. Because Thomas, it was pretty warm outside yesterday, especially in those afternoon hours. But today, things are going to be a little bit cooler, right? That's right. Cooler today thanks to yesterday's cold front. And while everyone gets the cooler temperatures, some of us will still get some rainfall today. We're going to jump right into Doppler radar and focus in on where these scattered showers are currently at. And it looks like it's Colville and Kettle Falls. You saw that lightning strike, that one lightning strike in the past hour. But it looks like that energy is waning this morning. So it's just a bit of rainfall over that region. Meanwhile, over Lincoln County, it's just hovering right over Highway 2 near Wilbur and Davenport. Getting a bit of light rain might be advancing towards Spokane, but we'll see if all this holds together. And one more point of emphasis to look at. There's a shower that just developed to the west of Pullman and moves, moving eastward. So Looks like it could rain in Pullman in the next couple minutes here. We want to get you to a construction alert for drivers this morning in Spokane. Monroe Street from Francis Avenue to Wellesley Avenue will be closed from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So in about a couple of hours, they'll be closing this down. This will cause some major traffic issues for especially the afternoon commute. We're told that detours will be in place around the closing, but you might want to give yourself some extra time this morning. Again, this is between Monroe and Wellesley. We are getting you ready for your day. Here are three stories around the Inland Northwest we are tracking this morning. Today, an Idaho judge could decide on a trial date for the man accused of murdering four University of Idaho students. The judge presiding over Brian Koberger's case noted it is a complicated matter because prosecutors say they plan to seek the death penalty if there is a conviction. Koberger's attorneys are also asking for a change of venue. The judge has yet to rule on that request. Also today, the community will be able to ask the four finalists for Spokane Police Chief questions in a public forum. These are the four candidates vying for the job here. Tonight, community members will be able to learn about their backgrounds and plans if selected for the job. This is happening from 5.30 to 7 p.m. tonight at the Central Library downtown. And a heads up to travelers, American Airlines flights are moving at the Spokane International Airport. Starting today, if you're flying American, you will need to go to Concourse A. The airport says that this move is to minimize passenger disruption during the Concourse C expansion project. They're also consolidating all late night departures to the A and B concourses to give flyers more dining options. We are taking a live look over Atlanta right now. In a matter of hours, President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump will take the stage in the city for the first presidential debate. Now, this is the first of two debates that they have agreed to. Tonight's debate starts at 6 p.m. our time right here on Crim 2. It will only feature the two presumptive nominees because the other candidates failed to qualify for this debate. Now, this debate will be 90 minutes long with two commercial breaks. CNN's Jake Tapper and Dana Bash are moderating this event. And CNN wrote in a statement they will use all tools at their disposal to enforce timing and ensuring a civilized discussion, they said. What topics will be covered has not been released, but a few possible ones include border security, immigration and abortion rights. Their second and final debate is scheduled for September 10th. And don't forget that you can watch the first presidential debate of the election on CREM 2 tonight. Because the debate begins at 6 p.m., that means there will not be a 6 o'clock newscast on CREM 2. But be sure to join us for the CREM 2 News at 10 following the debate for in-depth coverage you won't get anywhere else. Well, it appears the Supreme Court is about to overturn or at least press pause on Idaho's near total abortion ban. Crem 2 Shannon Mowdy breaks down what we know about the potential decision and what it could mean for the gem state and beyond. Bloomberg reports the leaked decision would pause part of Idaho's near total abortion ban for now, allowing terminations in emergencies that threaten a pregnant person's health. Idaho's attorney argued the case in front of the justices back in April. Potential loss of an organ, or serious medical complications for the woman, they can't perform those abortions. Yeah, Your Honor, if that hypothetical exists, and I don't know of a, um, a condition that is so certain to result in the loss of an organ, but also cer so certain not to um, transpire with death, if that condition exists, yes, Idaho law does say that abortions in that case aren't allowed. At issue is whether Idaho's law overrides the federal EMTALA, or Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act. 
The Biden administration argues it allows abortions in rare emergencies where a patient's life or health is at serious risk. Idaho argued that's an overreach. Mtala says nothing about abortion. In fact, Mtala requires that emergency rooms care for pregnant women and their unborn children. The Supreme Court allowed Idaho's law to go into effect while the case played out. Right now, Idaho does allow abortions to prevent death. Opponents to the emergency abortion ban say it forces doctors to make subjective decisions about whether a patient may die, putting them at risk of lawsuits. Some doctors say they've airlifted patients to hospitals in other states just to avoid that chance. Just in the first um, trimester, ironically, of this year, since January, the first four months of this year, we've had six versus one in all of 2023. Rebecca Gibran, the CEO of Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest, said they are eagerly awaiting a decision, but said, quote, however the justices decide, we shouldn't be here in the first place. Two years ago, this same court created a reproductive health care crisis across the country. Right now, lawmakers and political leaders across the GEM state, like AG Raul Labrador, are keeping quiet until the final ruling is out. Shannon Mowdy, Crem 2 News. Now, we also reached out to Governor Brett Little's office, but as of this morning, our calls and emails have not been answered. We're now another day closer to the world's largest three on three basketball tournament tipping off here in Spokane. With time ticking down to Hoop Fest, team check in begins today. So this morning, our Brandon T. Jones is joining us live from downtown right now. So Brandon, a huge day for players and teams. What do they need to know this morning? Yeah, that's exactly right, Channing. Could be a huge day for you, too. I think maybe you can come down here and get checked in because today is the official team check-in. We know the brackets were released yesterday. I know a lot of people are excited about that. I've already had someone reach out to me and say, hey, you're in my bracket. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. But of course, team check-in needs to be taken care of first. You'll have a window from 3 p.m. until 7 p.m. right here in this particular location at Riverfront Park, right next to the pavilion. It won't be hard to find. You can come out and a lot of people will point you into the right direction. But with that check-in process, you'll also receive your team packet with everything you need to know about this weekend's activities. You can already feel that energy picking up across the city as the games get closer. The courts are starting to get set up. Last night, five basketball pioneers were inducted into the Hoop Town Hall of Fame. Larry Wendell, Terry Kelly, Linda Sheridan, Tammy Tibbles, and Zags legend Adam Morrison, who our crew's got a chance to speak with at the ceremony. It's world renowned. I've, when I played professionally all over, people always talked, you spoke in and be like, oh, Hoop Fest, you know, more people than you would expect. Um, so it's cool to be a part of it. And so three to seven again is your check in window today. You'll have one more opportunity tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. to check in at the same location. But if you're in town, go ahead and make sure you get it done today. And then those first games tip off on Saturday morning. But for now, reporting live here at Riverfront Park, Brandon T. Jones from C News. Right now on Crim.com, we have everything you need to know about Hoop Fest from where to park to even where all of the games are taking place. And we're making it easy for you. All you have to do is text us the word Hoop Fest to our number 509-448-2000. We'll send you a link with all of that information right to your phone. It is 709 as we take you outside. It's certainly gotten a little bit windier as of this morning, and those winds are bringing in a bit of that cooler air. So it certainly feels cooler this morning compared to yesterday. It's going to stay that way all day long. Don't need the air conditioning. That is for sure today. Current temperature at 57 degrees, almost 10 degrees colder this morning compared to yesterday, and it stays breezy for most of the day with a few scattered showers, though we haven't seen anything yet here in the Spokane area. But there are those wind speeds which have already been upwards of 30 miles per hour this morning and likely stay that way all day long. So coming up, we'll show you where those scattered showers are most likely to form for the rest of the day today and give you a sneak peek at that Hoop Fest forecast. It's all coming up. 